In this video, I'd like to go over a few examples of using constant acceleration equations in order to solve some problems. Okay, so in the first one, suppose that we consider what happens when a car hits a tree. Okay, so um, if we know how fast the car was going initially, let's say it was moving 25 meters per second towards the tree, um, and then comes to a complete stop. Um, and due to the um, crumple zone in the car, um, the car doesn't come to a stop instantaneously. The car is able to move a little bit as it hits the tree. So let's say that the um, car crushes by 1.0 meters during this process okay, as a safety feature. All right, what we want to figure out then is the acceleration of the car during that crash. Okay, so um, what I like to do when I'm thinking about a situation like this is first sketch a picture. So um, let's say that we have a car like this. Um, we know it's initially moving at some initial speed, um, and then later it hits a tree like this, um, and so its final speed is zero. So I'll just draw another situation a little later. Like this, where we know the final velocity is zero. Okay, so um, solving constant acceleration problems um, what I like to do is first figure out what I know, because sometimes there's some hidden information in a problem. Okay, so there are five possible variables. We could know the initial velocity, the final velocity, the delta t, the delta x, or the acceleration. So here we know the initial velocity, and we know the final velocity, and we know how far the car moves during that acceleration. So we know three of the things, which means we can figure out the other two. The one we actually want is the acceleration. So we want to find one of the equations that has vi, vf, delta x, and a. So if you look at the three equations that you have, you have one that has those four in it. So that one is vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the numbers that I know. So vf is zero, zero squared is zero. vi squared, well vi is 25 meters per second, which is squared, plus two times the acceleration, which I want to know, but don't know, so I'll just put a. And the delta x is 1.0 meters, okay. So then I'll square out the 25, and I'm going to get 0 equals 625 meters squared per second squared. You should always write out all your units at every step. This will help you keep from making mistakes, um, particularly in physics. Okay, and then plus um, 2.0 meters, multiplying the 2 times the 1 meters, times A. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is solve for acceleration. So I'll move the 625 to the other side. Negative 625 meters squared per second squared equals 2.0 meters times A. And my acceleration is then equal to negative 313 meters per second squared. Okay, because one of the meters cancels, so I'm left with just meters per second squared. Notice how it's negative. So what does that mean? Well, in this process, I have implicitly assumed that the positive direction is to the right here. So my initial velocity was positive, my delta x is positive, which means that the acceleration is to the left because the car is slowing down. Okay, so that's a large acceleration. It would have been a lot larger if instead of 1.0 meters, maybe we had like 10 centimeters or something from an older car, you know, manufactured in like the 60s or something. They didn't have the same safety features as today, which would have made a much larger acceleration, um, and that would have made the crash a lot more dangerous. Okay, let's do another example. So in this example, let's say that we have an astronaut that is standing on an alien planet. So the astronaut is going to drop an object. Here's an astronaut. Um, with a helmet on, and they're going to drop an object, and it's going to fall to the ground. Okay, so um, when the astronaut drops the object, it goes um, 2.0 meters in um, 1.0 seconds. So the astronaut times how long it takes for the dropped object to hit the ground. And what the astronaut wants to know is what is the acceleration of that object that they dropped. Okay, so what do we know? Well, um, making a list of the things that we could know, we have initial velocity, final velocity, delta x, delta t, and acceleration. Um, we know the delta x that's given, the um, object falls 2.0 meters. And we know the time is 1.0 seconds. And it seems at first like that's all we know, um, but we, there has to be something else. We can't solve a problem if we don't have three pieces of information. So the key is that I said that the astronaut drops this object. And that means that they're not throwing it at the ground or tossing it upwards. It means that the initial velocity is zero meters per second. It just drops. Okay, now we know three of the things and we can solve for the others. Um, the one we're interested in here is the acceleration. So we want a, um, an equation that has initial velocity, delta x, delta t, and a. We have one that has those. So delta x equals um, the initial velocity times delta t plus 1 half a times delta t squared. Okay, so um, delta x was 2.0 meters. The initial velocity is zero, so that means this whole term is zero, plus 1 half 
A is unknown, but we know delta t is 1.0 seconds, which is squared. And so then when I solve, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that one half. Um, and then I'm going to be dividing both sides by second squared, and I'll be left with 4.0 meters per second squared equals A. Okay, so I should consider the sign of this, right? Does it make sense for the acceleration to be positive? Well, without actually stating it, um, when I said that the displacement was 2.0 meters instead of negative 2.0 meters, um, I was deciding that downward is the positive direction in this problem, which is fine. There's no problem with deciding that downward is positive. In any given problem, positive can be left, could be right, could be up, could be down, could be up a ramp, down a ramp. It doesn't matter. We just have to pick one and be explicit. So really, whenever you're solving these problems, you should pick which direction is the positive direction uh, before you start, and then make sure that all your velocities and positions and times and um, everything are consistent with those with that choice. Okay, so um, on this alien planet, the acceleration due to gravity is 4.0 meters per second squared, which is less than on Earth, which is about 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, let's do one more example. So in this example, a basketball player jumps 0.8 meters upward. Find the initial velocity. Okay, so this one is a little tricky because it doesn't seem like we have enough information. All right, so um, let's uh, take an inventory of what we know. Um, we have possibly an initial velocity, final velocity, delta x, delta t, and a. Okay, well, we want to find the initial velocity, so we definitely aren't told that ahead of time. Um, the delta x we do know, so the basketball player jumps 0.8 meters upwards, so 0 0.8 meters. And by choosing this to be positive, that means that in this problem I'm choosing upwards to be positive. Um, okay, so then um, what else do I know? It seems like I don't know anything else. Well, um, one thing that I know is that if they're jumping, like they start out on the ground and then they jump upwards and then later come back down, at the very top of that jump, the velocity is equal to zero. You go from moving upward, which is a positive velocity, and then a moment later you're moving downward, which is a negative velocity. So at that instant, at the very top of this basketball player's jump, they have a velocity of zero. So we can use that. The final velocity at the top of the jump is equal to zero meters per second. Okay, we still need one other piece of information though. What is that? Well, we know that on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is always the same. Okay, so this is a piece of information you'll be able to use all the time. You don't have to look it up or anything. You can just use that the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and due to my choice that upward is positive, the acceleration due to gravity is always downward, which means it'll be negative. Okay. So um, now we have the information that we need in order to solve for the initial velocity. And also if we wanted, we could solve for the time. Okay, so um, let's see. We want a formula that has initial velocity, final velocity, delta x, and acceleration. We have one. So vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Okay, so the final velocity was zero. The initial velocity is um, what we want to find, so vi squared, plus 2. Um, I'm actually going to just round 9.8 to 10. For any problems that you do on exams or um, you know, for a discussion or practice, I think it's fine to always just round the acceleration to 10. It's only a 2% error if you do that. Um, for the Wiley homework, you should use 9.8 or 9.81. It should tell you what to use, but um, if it doesn't, I would use 9.8. Okay, so um, 2 times 10 meters per second squared times uh, delta x, which is 0 0.8 meters. And I already messed this up because um, it needs to be negative 10 um, rather than positive 10 because I chose the acceleration to be um, negative or downward. Okay, so now let's um, multiply out that second term here. So I get 0 equals vi squared minus 16 meters squared per second squared. So 2 times 0.8 is 1.6 times 10 is uh, 16. So then I get moving things around vi squared equals 16 meters squared per second squared. And vi is then going to be plus or minus 4 meters per second squared. I have to include the plus or minus because um, either one is a solution to the equation vi squared equals 16. Um, so then I have to use just reasoning to figure out which one is correct. Um, should it be positive uh, four meters per second? Uh, not meters per second squared, so let me fix that. So is it positive four meters per second or negative four meters per second? Well, um, because the initial velocity is upwards, um, at the beginning of the jump, the basketball player is moving upwards, I have to choose the positive one given my sign convention. So the initial velocity for my final answer is positive four meters per second. Now, a takeaway here is that if you weren't careful about the signs, then in this step, you might have um, 0 equals vi squared plus 16 meters per second squared, in which case you'd have a negative vi squared um, equals 16 meters per second, which is impossible. So be careful about that. If you have a negative sign that doesn't make any sense, you can't take a square root of a negative sign. Um, for our purposes, square root of a negative sign means that you've made a horrible mistake somewhere and um, the physics is just not going to work out. So that's a, that's a really important hint if that ever happens to you to figure out that you made a mistake and you should look for where your error is. Um, but if you do everything correctly, then it should just work out that you have um, correct signs for the different kinematic variables.